What's up, YouTube people? It is I, the Grateful Recovering Addict, bringing to you another segment of Hypodermically Speaking, Confessions of a Spoon Cooker, Part in the Recovery. So this video, I want to talk about sober living, sober living houses, Oxford houses, and the like, right? I'm going to go off with what I know, my experience, my story. I've been an addict, alcoholic for a very long time, more than half my life, 2019. I went into a detox rehab and took it serious. I've been maybe a few more other times before that, didn't take it serious, went there for the detox, stayed for a little bit, either it was court mandated, made my parents happy, running from the cops, whatever. But 2019, I went to detox rehab, then I went to a halfway house. I was in a halfway house for eight months. And then in May of 2020, I moved into the sober house I'm living in now. It's a good sober house. The people that run the house, that own the house are good people. They do a good job of maintaining it. They're strict, the structure. So I like it. I'm benefit, benefit, benefiting from it. When I first moved to this house, you know, was it just eight months in a halfway house? You don't have, well, the difference between a halfway house and a sober house is like this. Halfway house, most likely you're coming out of a uh, straight out of rehab coming straight out of either jail or prison, ISP, drug court, uh, you get DOI funding, so it's all different one. There's state halfway houses, there's federal halfway houses, and there's other private halfway houses that are regulated by uh, a rehabilitation program. They have the halfway house and they get all these different uh, candidates from different backgrounds and they put them there and then by the terms that you agree to, you're there to serve out the rest of your time or you're there to get a leg up and get yourself back together, get a job, you know, Pro pro probation, parole, anything like that. I was in the, the uh, halfway house because I had DUI funding. I was on my second DUI in New Jersey. They uh, give you a, a option to get help. I got the help, so the DUI funding paid for my whole whole visit, right? So I didn't have to pay rent. They paid for the food, the bed, the shower. All the thing I had to uh, do was follow the rules. Rules, basically, you have to get a job. You have to get some kind of employment. Or if you don't have to work, get some kind of volunteer work. You have to do, you get assigned a chore. In a week or two, I was already the grounds captain. And then by the time uh, before I left, I was already the president of the house. You have uh, follow the rules. It's curfew. You have to uh, submit to random drug tests. You have to get along with the other uh, people living there, the residents. And just, just basic respect, right? I like the halfway house. It was good for me. I needed it. I get to see a lot of different people from different walks of life, how they lived, what, how their philosophy on life was, right? And then all this process that I see, you know, where I am, if you want to put it like on a spectrum, right? Some people didn't have a good life growing up. A lot of things happened. Some people had a great life and they just threw it away. I was one of those people where my parents always took care of me when I was a kid put me through school the rest was up to me I just got involved with some of the wrong people and I found out I like drugs and alcohol way too much than I should have and it just destroyed everything right but the halfway house was a good experience I needed that structure that time I spent there to get to the sober house now I'm in the sober house I've been this here since May of 2020 and the house has its uh I guess they call it flips you know and when I first moved here this house has 11 people. Other houses could hold anywhere from 10, 20, or whatever. The halfway house I was at was 20. Oxford houses may have less people because they're more highly stru uh, structured and organized. Sober houses, somewhere in the middle. They also call a sober house a uh, three-quarter house because the next step after that, you should be living on your own. You have this time to be here. There's no set time limit. Halfway houses have a set time limit. You're either discharged or your funding runs out and you have to figure out your plan. A counselor should speak with you as to what your plan is, what's your, uh, you know, care plan, aftercare plan. Here, they don't do that. There's no counselors here. People that are in a sober house, sometimes you are mandated to go. Like some people come out of rehab, they come straight here. I don't always recommend that depending on your situation. You have to uh, be honest with yourself. If you've been using for a long time, you went to detox rehab, you've been there for maybe a month. I don't think a sober house is right away. Going to a sober house is good for you. If you go to a halfway house, may, may be better. Or if you stay in rehab a little longer before you come to a sober living, is good, better for you. The reason is, is because when you come into a sober house, you have to pay rent, you have a chore, you have a curfew, you have to go to meetings, you have to work a program, you have to do all, all of this, uh, this is your this is your care plan, you have to do this. Otherwise, you're wasting a bed, taking up a space that someone else could benefit from, and you're really not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're here because you asked to be here, 
No one forced you to be here. Don't say court forced you or your parents forced you. You're here because you wanted to be here. And you wanted to get well. When I first moved here, like I said, back in May of 2020, it was 10 other guys. I moved in. Each, each sober house has different living arrangements. This house has a four-man room, a three-man room, a two-man room, and two individual one-man rooms. Those are supposed to be for the president and the vice president or the, the, the managers, the co-managers, right? I'm the right now co-manager of the house. There's another co-manager. He ended up staying in the two-man room with his buddy. I'm in one of the one-man rooms, and there's another one-man room downstairs with another guy that's been here for a little bit, too. Uh, you know, you, you go in the four-man room, you start out. It's like the observation room. It's uh, In this house, it's uh, two bunk beds, one guy up top, one guy below, two bed, two bunk beds. And you make it work somehow. You get closets, you get cabinets, you get... Uh, find out where you put your stuff. Don't keep food in the room. Basic stuff, right? Three-man room, one bunk bed, one bed. And as you... St stay you get seniority you move up so you start out in the four-man room you might start out the top bunk someone moves out or moves upstairs you get the bottom bunk then you go to the three-man room you start again in the top bunk then you get the bottom bunk then you get the bed make your way to the two-man rooms two single beds there's no bunk beds and if you stay long enough you may become the house manager or co-manager or some kind of seniority level right there's no set time limit like i said it's it's a matter of you getting what you need out of the whole program right you need to be here as long as you need to be here for you to get back out there because once you leave the bubble bursts and you're, you're in reality because to tell you the truth when you get out there not so many people can be sympathetic or understanding of the situation you're in you were a recovering addict alcoholic they they know they're aware of it but they don't have the time for it because out there's money work business and you have family and life other stuff to go to you have to learn how to juggle all this sober living when you move into this house, you have to uh, sign basically a contract saying that you're not going to bring drugs, alcohol, you're not going to steal, you're not going to fight with people. And all these are the things are the grounds for, uh, you know, getting you kicked out, dismissal, getting, you know, you're going to pay rent. You have to get a job and pay rent. If you don't have need it for a job, you have money, then you have to volunteer. You can't sit in the house all day, watch TV. You know, uh, we got two refrigerators downstairs. We got to keep them clean. You got a kitchen, you got a chore, you got... Somebody doing the first floor bathroom, second floor bathroom, somebody taking care of the garbage, somebody sweeping and mopping, somebody taking out the uh, porches, the ashtrays, somebody doing the garden, somebody outside doing the, the, the driveway and, the, and the, the sidewalk, right? It's basic structure set up to help you get some kind of foundation for a structure for yourself for when you time to move out of here. Now, what you do here with this time is entirely up to you. If you make the most of it, you'll end up being bettering yourself. I've seen people come here where they think it's like a frat house. Uh, you know, they also have a girl's house too. They have uh, sober girl's houses, right? Because they tell you in the beginning, you need to work, be selfish, work on yourself, can't be distracted. Don't worry about relationships that will come later. You need to really focus on what you, you need to worry about. Some people come in here, they got, you know, uh, courts to worry about. They got to go back to court. They got probation. They got parole. They got fines. They got tickets. They got debts. They got to sell credit cards, loans. They got maybe uh, child support. Maybe they got... You know, whatever your situation may be, you have the time to do that here because you can provide this address to those entities saying that you're here. And as long as you stay here, you can provide proof of residency that you're following a program, right? Some people just do that just to make the courts or whoever happy. And then when their time is up, they go back doing what they, they were doing. And it's just a matter of time before everything goes back downhill again. You're here. You asked to be here because you had admitted you were, had a problem with drugs and alcohol. You weren't living right. You were self-destructing. You needed to get help. You got the help. Now you're here. Now it's up to you to do the rest. You're required to go three meetings a week minimum. So you have to find meetings to go to. Guys have cars in the house. Maybe somebody offers a ride to a meeting. You could go. There's always a meeting within walking distance. If not, you could take the train, public transportation, and so many other uh, resources and programs out there that could help with rides and other kinds of programs that could help you with other kinds of aspects you know getting you a job re-entry maybe you can uh some kind of food assistance maybe some kind of get your license back there's so many things out there you gotta look into there's the raft program the star program there's harbor by the sea in this area at least i don't know in other states but there's so many programs you can look into plug yourself into a network and if you're serious about it they will help you you know it's food pantries food banks you can get food too i've seen guys moving here with no money in their pocket no nothing they've been living off the food banks for a while and that's fine that's what it's there for Jobs, jobs in the area, you know, if you're living over here, you have to see what's in the area. You got to walk there. You got to get an application, make a resume. This is all stuff that they should be teaching people in school, but not everybody always pays attention to that part of school. You know, so my basic advice, if you find yourself uh, going to, if you've been in a sober house, are in a sober house, or going to go to one, right, you need the help. 
my advice is this, take it serious. You know, you're going to go there. You're not here for a popularity contest. You're not here to, uh, you know, wow all the other people. You're not, get along with everybody. There's going to be people that you may not get along with, people that you don't like for whatever reason, but you got to do your best to respect them. Now, if you're in the house where it's completely toxic, it's it's not good for you, then you got to get up and go. You shouldn't stick around because it's not going to be good for you. The houses themselves are set up in a way where you have people that have been here a while. They know what's going on. They, uh, more or less established themselves. They probably got their license back. They got a car. They have jobs. They've been working there for a while. They're able to pay rent. They got, you know, food. They got they're going to meetings. They got sponsored. They work the steps. And then you got the newcomers who, you know, need those guys to basically, you know, show them the way. But they can show, I show you the way, but you got to go that way. You know what I'm saying? You got to figure that out yourself because what works for me may not work for you. If I go to meetings on, you know, on the weekends, because that's when I have off from work, you can't wait always to the weekends. If you're home during the day, you got to go. Same thing. You, you know, you get here right away. Don't get a job right away. Don't go out, get a first paycheck, go buy a bunch of sneakers and stuff like this because that's not going to help you in the long run. You got a plan for tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So I knew when I got here. See, when I got here, it was right around the pandemic. So I was able to collect the unemployment. I was, I was benefiting off of that. I got laid off from a construction job. I saved up like four grand from the halfway house when I moved in here. So I had money to like go off of plus the pandemic unemployment thing. So I was okay for a little bit. What I did with my time, I went to the beach. I got, I went swimming. Pandemic was great because there was less people out there, right? Uh, I was paying my rent. I was able to enjoy myself. And then I knew there was going to come a time where I had to go get a job. I got my job. I work where I work now. And I stuck to it. So my, my, my you have to get into a routine. My routine consists of this. When I wake up, make a little breakfast, some kind of coffee, oatmeal, uh, boil an egg, something like that, right? Something light. Well, every once in a while, you got to treat yourself. Maybe I'll make some bacon and eggs and some peppers on, on the Italian sub. Um, get ready for work. Before that, I didn't have a car, so I would have to take the train to work and back. Then later, I got a few guys in the house, a job with me. That's another thing. Don't worry about getting people in your house a job with you because that usually never ends well. Something happens where it's going to end bad. But if you want to be that guy that helps people, go for it. But don't hurt yourself or them in the process. I got a few guys in the job, uh, house of the job. They're not, they're not working with me no more. They work there for a little bit. Something always happens, whether they relapse, whether they just go somewhere else or whatever. And they, you know, they burn you basically. So I got jobs for people that were in the halfway house with me. And they, some, one guy was good. He stuck around, but then this was one for him. And then another guy, he relapsed. So it's a whole nother thing. So I go to my job. I do my job. I, I focus on whatever my job needs. I take care of my job. My job, my boss wants me to do X, Y, Z. I do X, Y, Z, right? And make sure they're happy at work. So I'm there for a paycheck. I get my paycheck, come back here, pay my rent, buy my food. When I have free time, if I if I need to rest, I rest. Go on a computer, go for a walk, whatever. But then I always try to hit a meeting. Go to a meeting. Uh, when it was the pandemic, it was just the Zooms, but then they opened up the physical meetings. So you go to meetings, switch it up. Go to an AA meeting, go to an NA meeting, go to a CA meeting. Go to meetings in your area, go to meetings outside your area. When I go visit my parents up north, there's a few, bunch of meetings in that area I go, I go check out, right? You know, find a home group, find a sponsor, start working steps, get your network built up. Because these are the, the, the things, the tools you're going to need to help keep you clean and sober. I've seen guys come here, put on a big show like they know everything. doesn't work. It doesn't end well for them. I've seen guys come here, don't do anything. They're still sober and clean, yeah, but they're not working a program. That Just because you're not using doesn't mean you're actually like spiritually fulfilling yourself. You know, you're... Yeah, you sit in a house all day. You're not going to use, you know. But what happens when you get out of here? You, you haven't done anything, right? So you need to work on these these things to make yourself uh, better yourself, right? You're here to better yourself. That's the whole point. You want to, you ask to be here. You need to put in the work yourself too. No one's going to do everything for you here. Also living in a sober house, you know, if you're living in a house, with a guy house or a girl house, whatever, you're living with other people. You're living with other people that, you may not know what it is to live in the house. Some people haven't been living in the houses. Some people don't know, you know, after you use dishes, you clean them. Some people don't know how to use cleaning supplies. Some people make a break the toilet. They break the sink. They they smoke the cigarettes outside. Some people, you know, you got work in the morning. They're up all night watching television stuff. So you got to establish boundaries. You got to know how to talk to people. You got to learn, let them know, hey, can you guys keep it down? I got work in the morning. You know, you can still watch TV. That's fine. Just please keep it down. And respect right i haven't been faced with a situation where there, there was a, uh, somebody being completely disrespectful that ended well for them there's people in this house that that lived here in the past that you could see right off the bat they're not going to make it here I, I i don't care you know i'm here for me you're here for you if you're not going to do everything for you and you you get kicked out for whatever reason that's on you i've been here long enough to know that 
Excuse me.